seventh NSED uh, seven NSED lecture series uh, in our uh, uh, Zoom meeting, and uh, it's very uh, we are very happy that today we have our uh, very much uh, senior our our uh, colleague uh, and uh, our uh, geotech engineer uh, Dr. Hemnad Kimire with us as a uh, seventh lecture, uh, and he's coming giving seven, seven lectures NSED seventh lecture in this uh, online uh, platform. Uh, before beginning, I would like to request our uh, NSCG Secretary, uh, Mr. Kansan Chawla Gai, to give some, uh, first to give the welcome speech and to give uh, the brief introduction of our uh, speaker today. Kansan, now it's your role today from, from this point. Please, Kansan. Kanchanji? Kanchan? Are you there? Looks like some problem with constant connection. <laughs> constant, you are now connected. Okay, we are waiting. Concern? Sir, my exit concern like call Garuta, sir. Well, for that side, he's already there. He's yeah, connected. Sir. Concern? Looks like he has some problem here. So. <laughs> this is really. Although these Zoom stops are very good, but sometimes we face this kind of problem. So maybe without killing the time, maybe I can start the this uh, introduction from my side. So uh, let me uh, introduce our speaker today. Today we have uh, Hemnath Kimire, uh, our respected Hemnath Kimire, sir. He's, uh, he has a PhD in structural and geotechnical engineering uh, from Hokkaido University, Japan in 2004. He did in a master's in engineering and applied geology from Asian Institute of Technology, Bangkok. and. He worked in the, especially he, he gave his input in the rock engineering related to the establishment of the Dan Dam. And he did his uh, Bachelor of Engineering in Mining Engineering uh, from Bengal Engineering College, uh, Calcutta University, India. And uh, he has a very long experience of the mining engineers in Department of Mines and Geology in government of Nepal. In government of Nepal. In 1991, uh, he started the career as a mining engineer, and after that, uh, he's working as a geotechnical engineer in different countries in the field of tunnel construction, hydropower, subsurface, uh, and surface instrumentation, highway, railway, bridge construction, etc. In different Asian countries: Nepal, uh, Thailand, Timor Leste, uh, Afghanistan, Malaysia, Laos, India, with different organizations. Since early 2012, uh, engaged with the SMEC uh, International and working as a geotechnical consultant in Bangladesh in different projects. Uh, so he has a lot of experience, especially working in the South Asian and Southeast Asian countries. And uh, recently engaged in the geotechnical investigation of Ionic Padma Breeze in Bangladesh. 
So, uh, and he has lots of uh, his technical publications, especially on the uh, the uh, stress measurement in weak rock, and as well as the development of stress measuring system by overlapping method of suitable soft rock uh, technique. And as well as he has a number of uh, like um, uh, laboratory study of new stress meters. So these are some of the very most innovative concepts that he has developed with his Japanese colleagues. So he's uh, uh, very much well known uh, uh, from, uh, in the literature also. He's doing good uh, publications. He's publishing good publications in the Nepali literature and public, uh, publishing uh, some of the good, good poems written in Nepali language. And uh, those are the very much well well uh, well. Uh, well recognized by the our uh, the uh, our literature uh, people also, and uh, even he has uh, uh, some good uh, music videos are also there. So he's a very much multi-dimensional, multi-talented, talented person and a good engineer in that sense. Like he did a good job, are, are very very much well uh, well praised uh, job in uh, Padma uh, Bridge. So. With this very much uh, little uh, introduction, I, I'm very sure I cannot give him his full good introduction in that sense. Like, let's listen to him today and what he did in the geotechnical aspects of, in the Padma Breeze. And let's uh, have a good uh, discussion with him uh, regarding the, all the challenges, what he, he faced during the construction. So, uh, Hemna, sir, now he, uh, I, I would like to request the, the, uh, hand over the platform to you uh, to, to deliver your, your lecture in our NSED seventh um, uh, lecture series. Thank you very much, and please start your lecture. Thank you, Ranjanji. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. Very good. Let me start, OK? Yeah, very good. So first of all, I will thank Ranjanji and Nepal Society of Engineering Geologists for giving me this opportunity to share my experience of the geotechnical works in Padma multi-purpose bridge project today evening. Thanks a lot again. Good evening and namaste to all friends who are here. So for today, I'll be sharing my experience and few other things regarding the Padma Bridge. I worked there during the construction phase. So mainly I'll be sharing my experience during the construction of this bridge. Uh, not so much related to the detailed design aspects, uh, construction aspect only. So let me start from the location of the bridge. This bridge is uh, located around 45 kilometers southwest of uh, Dhaka, the capital city of Bangladesh. This is over the Padma River, around 6.15 kilometer long bridge. The river at the site goes west to east. So the river banks are north and south. North bank is Mawa and south bank is Zanjira. So this river, let me give you brief uh, information about this Padma River. All the river systems of Nepal, when they flow down south to India, they join to the Ganga river system, which in English they call Ganges. I like to call Ganga. This Ganga river, uh, when flowing from around, say, we can say this year also flows from, uh, say, west to east, uh, around west to east. Uh, it goes, it enters Bangladesh from the Farakka Dam of West Bengal. After entering Bangladesh, this Ganga river is called Padma. And another river system, we have heard of a uh, big river system, Brahmaputra, which flows all the way west to east in China and then comes down south to India, mainly Assam area, and is flows down to Bangladesh. After entering Bangladesh, this uh, Brahmaputra is called Jamuna. And when Jamuna and Brahm, this uh, Padma, say Brahmaputra and Ganga, when they both confluence inside Bangladesh, the river system is called Padma River. So this river is over that Padma, which is formed after the confluence of Brahmaputra and Ganga. The contribution of water from uh, Ganga is around 40% and from Brahmaputra is 60%. So we have seen so big Ganga. 
Brahmaputra is 1.5 times more than that in terms of volume of water. So we can guess what is the volume of water at the riverside. And mainly in uh, Bangladesh, as we know, the mode of transportation is, uh, say, air transportation, land transportation, and major is water transportation. So while uh, traveling down to uh, southern part of Dhaka, the southern, uh, around nine districts in the southern part, southwestern part, uh, all the people had to uh, cross the Padma River through ferry. So the government planned to build a bridge, mainly the initiation was taken by the present Honorable Prime Minister of the Bangladesh. So it was concepted, conceptualized. This is downstream and upstream of the river. North part is the left bank, right bank is the south part. We have peers from number one to number 42 total 42 peers. So we did all geotechnical investigation in river 42 peers plus the Mawa Bayadak area and Janjira Bayadak area. So let me give you a brief information about the main bridge contract package. Span total we have 41, two transition peers and 40 center peers. So span length is 150 meters and total length of the bridge is Main bridge is 6.15 kilometer. This is warren type steel truss girder bridge and concrete deck slab on upper deck. So lower deck is single track dual gauge railway, 13.6 meter height. Upper deck is 21.65 meter wide concrete deck slab, four lane road, four lane highway. So navigation clearance at the bridge point is 18.30 meter. Total length of the road viaduct is 3.148 kilometer. Mawa site and Janjira site, 1.478 plus 1.67. So total length of rail viaduct, the lower deck is railway, total length for the rail viaduct is 532 meters. And there are utilities going through the bridge, 762 mm dia gas transmission pipe and service ducts. This is the brief, brief information of the bridge. Pile details, we have 40, center piles. All the piles are racked piles. One horizontal is to six vertical. Steel tubular driven piles with diameter three meter and thickness 60 mm. There are six piles each in 18 pairs, hexagonal configuration. This is the configuration of the pile. We can see in the 3D view. Six piles in 18 pairs and seven piles in or another 11 pairs. Because of the geological condition of the area after we did the detailed geotechnical investigation, we found some of the area is weak. So one center pile has to be inserted extra. And there are seven, uh, in 11 pairs, there are seven piles is with skin grouting also, where the condition is more weaker. So total pile is 262. Pile length is 98 meter to 122 meter. And transition pairs, there are 16 number of vertical board driven casting piles, three meter dia up to 80 meter length in each of the piers, pier one and pier 42. At Bhairak area, 1.2 meter each, vertical board casting place piles are there with different numbers according to the ground condition. So this is the 3D view of the piles and plan view. Pile cap size is 18.6 into 16.6 hexagonal type. The pile cap thickness is 5.5 meter. Pile cap at bottom is the level is plus one meter PWD that is uh, equivalent to mean civil level what we call and pile spacing is five meter. So this is the 3D picture real view of the river span 
pairs, 150 meters center to center. This is lower deck for railway and upper deck for lane highway. So there are below this, this is the pile cap. We see, we can see it hexagonal. So we have six or somewhere seven number of steel piles below it as the foundation. And this is transition pier, as we see here. And after the transition pier starts the viaduct area. So lower deck is the railway deck, upper deck is for lane highway. Along with the main uh, bridge project, obviously there, is, there should be river training works also. At the Mawa end, the length was 3.135 kilometer, concrete block above the water riprap, and boulders and geobag were dropped below in the slope to make this table. Janjira side, the length was more, 13.08 kilometer. Same configuration, concrete block above water riprap, above water and riprap, and dumping of boulders and geobags on the dredge slope. The major stages of the project, let me just go through very briefly. Pre-feasibility, 1998. This is done by the government, Bangladesh Bridge Authority. Feasibility study by JICA grant, 2000 to 2005. Land acquisition, environmental management, all those things, 2006. Detailed design, 2009 to 2011. These are the consultants involved. Independent checking was done in 2010 and implementation, the construction phase started in 2015 and completed in 2022. Government of Bangladesh decided not to take any loan from funding agencies on 9th July, 2012. Behind this, there is some story, we'll not go into it. It was a great decision by the Honorable Prime Minister and she stood in this decision and helped in every aspect to complete the bridge as per design, contract agreement was signed on 17th June and notice for commencement was given on 26th November 2014. So the implementing authority of the project is Government of Bangladesh, Ministry of Road and Transport, Road Transport and Bridge, Bangladesh Bridge Authority, Project Implementation Unit was under this BBA. Panel of experts over there, top geotechnical and then Breeze, civil engineering, other concerned field exports from Bangladesh and from abroad. Around 11 exports were there in this panel of exports. And management support consultant was rendered from UK. There were Japanese and other international consultants. Construction supervision consultant was Korea, KEC Korea, with four Korean and two local companies. Contract main bridge contract was China Major Bridge Engineering Company Limited, Chinese company, and river training work, works also, Sino Hydro Corporation, China. Cost of the main bridge, USD 2.4 billion, river training works, USD 1.1 billion, so total is 3.5 billion USD for the project. So these are the economic and other aspects, I will not go through all the details. This bridge connects nine districts of the southwest Bangladesh along with two major ports, Mongla and Paira. And it establishes the missing link along the Asian highway and the Trans-Asian railway as well. <laughs> so the main challenges, I'll go through very quickly. Construction of steel tubular pile for the main bridge piers with base grouting and screen grouting. Screen grouting technique and then base grouting technique for such deep piles and so big piles was a major challenge. Construction of RC board piles for the approach viaduct and trans transportation of the piers, especially to Mawa site, it, uh, where there is uh, potential liquefaction depth up to 27 meter. So all this construction was a challenge due to this liquefaction depth very high. During the date, geotechnical investigation, 22 of the pairs, at the foundation of the 22 of the pairs, presence of low strength clay and silt was confirmed. So we have to change the provisional design. The requirement of 
largest available hydraulic hammer from Germany to drive such a big piles, three meter die piles down to 125 meter depth. And large friction bearing pendulum was required, which is the largest by capacity in the world. So construction of this manufacturing and all this quality control was also challenge. And transportation of the 3200 ton steel truss by floating crane to the place was also a challenging job, which used very special type of floating crane. Some portion of the bridge is straight, while some portion has curves, vertical and horizontal. So this also created some challenges while launching the steel truss. In 2020, there was severe erosion in the Mawa site with loss of some construction equipment and construction material. Several technical challenges were faced in the RTW river training works as well because it was the largest of its kind and big 800 kg geobags were to be dumped. So all the equipment and then all the management was quite challenging. So all these challenges was overcome by skill cooperation through all the parties involved, consultant, employer, and the contractor. From employer side, there were very technically strong PIU members who were involved in the bridge project from the very beginning, from the beginning of the feasibility phase and then design phase. So there, there was timely handover of all the sites, which is very critical in all the projects. Proper handling of land acquisition and social issues. Coordination with other government and non-government authorities was very excellent. All of them were very cooperative. Timely decision on various issues and ready to issue budget for any technical detail studies because there had to be done very special type of technical studies while construction also. And payment was done very timely. This was the say very special project and then it was directly supervised by the prime minister's office also so every authority which were con connected and concerned with this project were very much cooperative and from the construction supervision consultant side also technically sound and inside knowledge of all the technical details or the members cooperative proactive practical knowledge and experience and technical transformation was uh, there, very good. There were technical trainings and then on, on the site training and everything was there so that uh, local uh, mid-level and low-level technicians will get enough knowledge to handle such projects in the future in the mid-technician level. Timely decision and full design knowledge of the piece with the construction supervision consultants and they had the full knowledge of project specification, relevant standard course, norms, everything, and good at problem solving, contact with related international experts when it is when it was required, and knowledge of local situation, work style, and way of dealing. So this one, all good points from the consultant side. Contractor also was strong and technically and managerially very strong team. They were strong in technicians mid-level and low-level technicians at the site, cooperative. And another thing is we did not face much of language problem. Most of the projects where there is international contractor, we, especially with the Chinese, we encountered the language problem. But there in Padma site, in the beginning, there were some translators, but afterwards we had good junior and mid-level engineers who could cooperate and communicate with us in good English. That was a good part of it. They had full knowledge of project specification and all the things. And main thing was good cooperation with all the team or all the parties concerned. So full technical support was available from panel of experts and management support consultant and full support from honorable prime minister's office, regular site visit by the honorable minister. All concerned authorities were very much cooperative. A special instruction was given by the Prime Minister's office not to hold any decision which is related to Padma project. And the local people were also very much cooperative. 
especially what we find in our third countries when high authorities say from government side or from ministry either minister or others when they visit the site normally they are not concerned in the technical things they go to site they enjoy they just ask few sensible and non-sensible questions and come back but it was not like that in Bangladesh. while i was there for more than three years the honorable minister he regularly visited the site and he was there to solve the problem always he used to say please if there is any problem give me in time i'll solve it but the project needs to move ahead very smoothly that was the instruction from him and then he showed this spirit always at the site one single project from south asia which was able to hold four super scale world records that's why we call it iconic padma beach the longest tracking pile of three meter diameter up to 125 meter length buried 122 meter this is the world record another is the longest steel truss girder 3200 ton with her concrete decks largest double curvature friction pendulum bearing capacity given here and largest single contact for river training wars with the USD 1.1 billion. This was the largest single river training wars contract in the world. Three first time in the world, enhancing the skin friction of driven steel tubular piles by injecting grout through the dam. So this was first time enhancing skin friction of vertical RC board piles. And then first time roadway slab technology in the world, precasting and epoxy gluing deck slabs into 900 meter long modules. These were the first time, three first time in the world. And seven first time in Bangladesh, super decoder, use of microfine cement, double deck bridge, modular movement joint, waterproofing on the bridge roadway deck, seven full phase resettlement sites, and longest road comrail bridge in Bangladesh. And this happens to be the longest bridge in the river Ganga water system also. So this one I have shown you the downstream operation of all these things. Let me go to geotechnical investigation aspect. Our scope was to do the geotechnical investigation in all each of the piers in main river and the Bhairak piers. And these are the Bhairak piers, Mawa side, north bound, south bound, two bounds, and then main bridge comes to Bhairak area of the Zanjira all these things and then trial trial piles, constructability piles, every location we had to do the geotechnical investigation to know the detailed ground condition. And around uh, two kilometers downstream of the main bridge, there is a four kVA transmission line and each of the seven locations, seven piers of the transmission line also, we had to do the geotechnical investigation. So we use the rotor drilling method casing down to about 330 meters, and if needed, more than that also. Use of bentonite with two settling tanks as a drilling fluid, and properties of bentonite was regularly checked to match the specification. Use of core barrel for drilling so that we receive continuous core so that we will not miss any place for our observation. Wherever we have taken sample, it's okay, but wherever we don't need to take sample also, the core is continuous and then we can check in detail what is the ground condition in each and every layer. These are the platforms and then other systems used for the drilling in the river. So we use drilling platform where the water is very shallow. First make the platform and then drill up. But where the water is very deep in the main channel area, deep channel area, we use Floating bars. <coughs> so the different in situ test. Normally we know all of this. This is standard penetration and mainly taking the SPT sample and checking in the some property checks in the lab. But here in this project we have some other special type of test also: flat plate directometer and pressure meter, self-boring pressure meter and 
high pressure dial attometer, and then another one was the cone penetration test, which we call piezocone penetration test, and then in situ resistivity test as well. So these were the all the tests done at the site. So this one is SPT test. I'll not go into detail. All of you know it. This is the SPT one. The main thing here in the SPT, what we use is donut hammer, which is auto trip system. Normally, when we do SPT, as we know, we have the three sections of 150 MMEs and then uh, take the SPT count for, of the last two. But here to get the detailed information, what we did is we divided this into six sets, 75 mm each. And normally for 150 mm in uh, say mid-size or small projects, we just, uh, uh, when the SPT is more than 50, we say it's uh, for continuous uh, three, uh, consecutive three uh, depths, we say it's uh, good ground condition and just we uh, terminate our drilling. But here in this uh, project, because it was a very big project, and then we need, uh, I uh, say detail uh, information about the ground condition. So we divide it into 75 mm each of the six sets, and then we terminate the SPT if the blow count is more than 100. So it was special over here. That's why I went into detail. So this is all the SPT, this one. And um, now we see here in the main, main river, this is the SPT count. So normally it is increasing. Once we see here, once we go down around 120 meter and below, we can see there the SPT value in some places drops below 50. This one, as I said before, in some locations, say uh, around 11 pier location, when we went down to 120 meter, we encountered hard clay. It was very peculiar. In our area, we don't expect like this, but in the Padma River, all the layer at the top, we found uh, uh, coarse sand and some gravel layers we found below 70 meter. Uh, once we go below 70 meter, we see here SPT, say more than 125 or 150. So this is the layer where we found coarse sand and some gravel also. But some piers after 120 meter, that's why we have to add one more pier in the center and make seven piers in 22 pile locations, seven, seven piles in 22 pier locations due to this condition. And then another system was a flat plate diatometer. This was done in every pier, uh, three meter interval. I'll not go into detail of this test. So this is the flat plate diatometer. How do we do it? If we want to know in detail, we can have another session for this detail, all these details. I'm not going to detail over here. So this is the process and calibration and all these things. And this is how we insert and how we connect into all the cables. And this is the calculation for different parameters. And this is the output result, which is obtained at the site itself. So this is material index, constant modulus, under and shear strength, all this we receive at the site. And this result is now printed in the tabular form. These are the this is for the dissipation test. So from the, the this uh, test, what we get is soil stratigraphy, lateral stress, strength, compressibility, all these things. And another test was the pressure meter. This is the self-boring pressure meter, and this is high pressure dilator meter. So all these are uh, say automatic system. Data acquisition is all at site, all controlled manually by computer and instantly we receive the data. So we have uh, two different types. One is self-boring pressure meter, another was displacement pressure meter. So this is self-boring, this high pressure dilator meter at the right side. Uh, self-boring is 
as is enters the borehole, it bores itself, goes down, and then when it bores itself and goes to the desired location, and we do the test. But for this high pressure dilated meter, we have to insert it into the pre board hole. So this is control unit, redraft unit, all those things are self boring. So this is the process we insert into the borehole and then tie the cables. This is the output. It's just similar to our consultation test in the lab, the loading and unloading. And from this corpse and all these values, we calculate different parameters. This is the data logging system and then the parameters, how we calculate this data analysis, calculation of the different data with the slope of the curve and then with the intercept of the curve. And this is the output. And this is the output in the graphical form. All this lateral stress, under and shear strength, and then other cohesion, friction, stiffness, on your over consolidation ratio, all these are received from this test. And then let me go to the piezo penetration test. This one done at each and every borehole around 70 meter, seven meter away from the our uh, SPT borehole because we cannot do in the same borehole. It has to be done in the face land. One borehole for SPT and other test was done uh, nearly at the center of the pile. And this PCPT was done around uh, seven meters away from it. So these are the instruments done for the PCPT process. I'm not going to drill. This one is say counterweight. We use this counterweight. And these are the PCPT rods. And then these are the multi-casing used for the rods. So the cable goes inside the rod. And then if needed, somewhere we do the multi-casing also. And, and this is the output. So here it gives subsurface stratigraphy, pore water pressure, shear strength, relative density, and coefficient of permeability, all this. And then in-situ resistivity test was also carried out. This one was mainly, uh, it was done with the owner four pin method. This resistivity, uh, it was for uh, calculation of the degree of corrosivity because we are using uh, steel tubular pile. So the corrosion need to be up to a certain uh, limit only. Although the pile was uh, obviously painted, but still there is some provision for the corrosion. So we need to find the corrosivity of the uh, material at the site. So that's why it was done. So this is the relationship between resistivity and then corrosivity. Then as we know, we have taken uh, samples from the borehole. This is one is linear sample from SPT and then some bulk disturb samples, then open drive samples, measure sample and some undisturbed samples we had taken. So these are all the, and this is um, borehole backfilling finished. And then after collecting the samples, we did the lab test, different kind of lab test, particle size distribution, moisture, all this, I'm not going to delay, you know it all. These are the, all the very good lab was set at the site. Uh, two labs were there because our work was going on consecutively in Mawa side and Janjira side with two different uh, geotechnical teams. So we had a lab also two different labs so that the work progress is more. So these are all the equipments, very well equipped lab and very uh, with well uh, experienced lab technicians. So I had the scope to um, supervise all the site work plus the lab work as well. So these are the different equipment and different kind of lab test. So this is the output of the lab test, bulk density, say mica content, redox percent potential, that is redox potential is also for corrosivity. And then storing of all the samples. After we test the samples, the half, one half was tested, another half what we uh, get there, it was all preserved. Still now it is preserved and then I think it will be placed in the museum. Padma Breeze has uh, planned to make a museum and then all these samples will be stored for future any 
observation or anyone wants to come and see for anything, it will be preserved there. So temporarily we put in this uh, uh, wooden um, uh, our, um, core samples, uh, all the wooden boxes, but afterwards permanently we put all this in the plastic, very say, good plastic containers borehole wise. All these are preserved till now. So the criteria for the classification of the soil in the site was um, defined very well in the specification. So the units, main geological units were uh, classified as per the uh, content, the fine content of the uh, soil. So if the finer is more than 50%, it's unit 1A. If finer is more than 50, and say between 50 and 20 percent it is unit 1b and if it is more than less than uh, say it is uh, the uh, finer material is uh, less than 20 but more than 10 it will be unit 2 and in unit 3 if the coarse material is more than 10 so this is a different type of measure units or unit 1a b 2 and 3 this one is uh, especially done uh, specified in this uh, project specification and then for unit two and unit three there is a subdivision which is as per the spt value so measure unit was as per the fines content and uh, course content of the material and subdivision is as per the spt so due to all this now we can see here unit 1a is where we have fines content more than 50 percent so yet this yellow what we see is all clear so that's why we have to modify the design and then insert one more pile in 22 number of peers so when when we go below 120 meter we encountered with this clear layer so upper layer is 2d 2d means where spt is uh, around less than 50, 3F is SPT more than 50, 2F and 3F is where there is gravel also, little bit. Once we go below 70 meter, we found gravel also. And this is a uh, design scout level of the bridge. And this provision design to level of the main bridge, it was 100. 14 meter, but ultimately uh, in some of the place we had to go down to 122 meters. And there was a liquefaction uh, potential assessment also. We considered different criteria and then we calculate the liquefaction potential of the main bridge plus uh, the two biodeck area. So with this criteria in the MAO biodeck area, we found some of the places which are liquefiable down to 27 meters so afterwards we had to increase the length of the pile due to this liquefaction potential in this area this is the one so this is the main our geotechnical aspect of the Padma bridge and some other information i think my time is also nearly over so let us discuss if you want to know something more and discuss in anything we can go into detail Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for a wonderful uh, lecture. I think uh, this is really uh, informative for us that we understood the, the what exactly the the geotechnical stuff were handled over uh, handled in the Padma Bridge uh, Foundation. So I would like to open the floor for the uh, questions. Uh, I think uh, there are some few questions already asked by uh, some of our participant um, uh, first of all i would like to request uh, professor hussein uh, atm scout hussein uh, would you like to ask something here uh, directly uh, are you have giving some uh, putting some questions in chat box Sakhavat, are you ready for the question yes please please let yeah, us please. let us go for the discussion yes yeah can i ask uh, yeah yeah question? please please Please, please, why not? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, at first, I'd like to express my thanks to our honorable speaker uh, of today's uh, presentation.
So I enjoyed it very much. It's a very important and interesting topic for Bangladesh as well as global civil engineering point of view. And my, actually this is in terms of uh, the technical aspect, many, many important aspects has already been uh, uh, presented here. But one thing is that uh, it is, I am not actually clear about uh, my spot regarding the, getting the SPT values at higher depth, how it was possible uh, mm -hmm. during site investigation to get the values at higher depth. Normally we use either light cable percussion boring or wash boring for a certain depth up to 100 meter or uh, 80 meter or 70 meter. And after that, how it was possible for the team to get the uh, speed values higher depth? Is there any change of practice or is that common situation normally? Yeah, Imran sir. Sir, uh, can you please repeat again? Uh, the voice was some somewhat disturbed. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, actually, my query is that yes. regarding the getting SPT values at yes. Oh, depth. yes, yes, I got it. SPT yeah. values in the depth more than higher 80 depth. meters or more than yes. 80, 90 meters. Yeah, How yeah. we get it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. So, uh, in this case, while drilling uh, below uh, 90 meters, we used. Uh, a higher capacity drilling machine. And then for SPT values, obviously what you raised the question is true. More than 80 or 90 meters, obviously we may not get the exact situation from the SPT values. That's why we had done for uh, say um, cross-checking, we did other type of test also. That uh, right. dilatometer test, and then self-boring pressure meter, high pressure dilatometer, fat plated dilatometer, that was, to cross check the SPT. Obviously, for SPT, we have the correction. Um, As you go but, more depth and all these things, we consider so many parameters and we have the correction for the SPT. Oh, only basic, but not the direct, uh, like uh, with hammering, we are penetrating the like spin sampler or any sampler inside and getting, as you mentioned already, seven sets of, you already marked seven sets. Yes, just to get the SPT value. But at higher yes. depth, after 100 meters, normally it is very difficult to get any number or any even entering into the ground. Uh, so that's why uh, it is my actually one of yes. the interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a very uh, for us. It was also so much difficult. And what we feel is uh, yes, we could do the hammering and all these things. It was uh, done well due to good equipment, but uh, physically, one thing doing the work is there. On a, another thing is how to utilize that data uh, and how much reliable is that data. So for that one, that's why I inform you, we had some other type of test and then some detailed uh, soil test also to confirm the values. So it was possible yeah. to go down up to 130, 35 meters, sir. Because yeah. of the high capacity yeah. drilling machine, high capacity exactly. drilling machine, and special, special, very, uh, say, what I will say is very uh, special type of uh, drill rod, very strong, made of very strong steel, what is normally not used in other projects where you go down to 50 it or 60 meters only. So it was quite difficult American for us. Standard. This yes. method actually is not uh, anywhere, it is not discussed like that. Do you agree? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is not uh, not so common, sir. It yeah, is yeah, common. and because yes. in the common standard global in, uh, that is uh, yes, yes. Globally, so, going down to hundred or hundred and thirty five meters is not normal. Yes, not a common. So validity. Level. So validity. Uh, how uh, also uh, how it is possible to say about the validity of the yes. data? Yes, that was because there is obviously, sir. That was yeah, another yeah. question. For that one, we did uh, say. Uh, detail uh, soil uh, test also, and then we confirm with another test also. What we I already told you the pressure be, um, borehole pressure meter, which gives the in situ values, and PCPT yeah. one penetration test also gave us some information. So we exactly. correlate and then we use those values, sir. Directly mm -hmm. only using the SPT, we cannot do. <laughs> we cannot, as you say correctly, sir. With yeah, SPT yeah. only, you. it was not possible. Yes. Yeah, CPT is CPT in that case a little bit better yes. than other tests already mentioned you. Thank you very much. Yes, Thank okay, you. sir. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sakawa. Very honorable yeah. discussion that we had today. And and uh, we have another question, uh, him, sir, uh, from uh, Mr. Mohammed Sakil Mahabub. Mahabub. He, yes. he was asking about the, could you please mention about the mitigation measures of liquefaction potential? Oh, liquefaction potential, in fact, uh, First, we correlated with uh, there are separate uh, several different methods. We did uh, from uh, confidence penetration test. One is cone penetration test. Another is uh, from the um, content fine content. What is the percentage of fine content? Another is SPT value. Another is depth. So there are several. Methods. So he was, he was asking about the mitigation measures. What do you uh, oh, mitigation you, measures? Sorry, for yeah, liquefaction yeah. mitigation is just the mitigation is uh, increasing the number of piles and depth. That is the only okay. way. Yeah, we cannot so do other, the, any other the, thing for mitigation. Yeah. We cannot oh. go in the in the large scale. We cannot go for ground improvement, right? If it okay. is in a small scale, obviously we could have gone for uh, ground improvement. That is the way. But there is a very uh, large scale project. So we could not go for any ground improvement. That's why we have to increase the number of piles and do the say base grouting and screen grouting. That was the way. Yeah. That's good. So anybody uh, other? Uh, yeah. Regarding, regarding uh, this one, can I uh, share something? Is it possible to uh, find uh, uh, that is a deep mixing uh, method at greater depth? Oh, deep mixing method is um, as a way to solve improvement, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. In that, uh, in this project, uh, this uh, for the soil improvement, we had not such, uh, any such studies or any such uh, provision. Yeah, but in Matarbari, yeah, another but, uh, another mega mixing, project of Bangladesh. Yeah, where... deep mixing uh, in uh, this kind of area where it is very fine sand. And most silt. Yeah. So in that case, I think if we use normal cement, it may be difficult. If we use fine cement only, yeah, that may be possible. That's why for the screen grouting of the piles, yeah. we had to use fine cement because the content was mostly fine sand. Oh. Because so in the fine nice. sand. Yeah, the grain size is very small. That's why in fine sand to insert the say to, to uh, say um, uh, yes to uh, improve uh, that uh, condition. Uh, our normal uh, cement, I think, will not work. That's why uh, um, fine cement was imported from I think Singapore and Hong Kong. That's why it is first time use fine cement in uh, Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Uh, yes. Sir. The question uh, raiser, uh, engineer MD Shakil, uh, yes, can sir. you please uh, explain okay. in case uh, yeah in case of Matarbari? Yes. Uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm asking the question raiser, uh, engineer MD Shakil. Could you please yes. tell uh, Shakil? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, what about the Matarbari situation? In case of uh, rain side. Actually, uh, sir, we are uh, improve our ground in Matarbari around uh, 20 meter uh, from the surface level. Okay. By deep mixing method. Because there okay. is the soft cohesive soil. Uh, I mean, the clay clay soil, actually. So that's why we use this deep so mixing. So it, it was possible there. Yeah. Yeah. Deep mixing may be possible up to 60 meter, maybe max, maximum. Cases. But I have yeah. one question regarding the CPT test. Yes. Yeah, yeah please, Sakil. Please, yeah. please, as, as we know, the uh, so we, with increasing depth, the pressure is uh, rising. So yes. be, because of the air, uh, water pressure, I mean the pore water yes. pressure, uh, yes. I have actually experienced about uh, around 50, uh, 35 meter, it almost yes. uh, 35 or more than around 50 M MPA. So how it is yes. possible to greater than 100 meter by CPT test? Uh, CPT test, uh, what we have done is as we yeah. go to deeper depth, what we do is we use the casing. pre borehole. Uh, yeah, yeah. Suppose we have done uh, CPT to 50 meter depth, then yeah. uh, we uh, bring out the um, CPT rod, 
we do the drilling. Okay. I will put the casing up to say 45 meter only, leaving five then meter again for five minutes. Okay, and then yeah, with the use, use of casing, we can go below because in this 50 meter, there is no friction, right? Yeah, yeah, I understand. So okay. accordingly, we use say, uh, the different si uh, sizes of casing to go below 100 meter. That was the method used. So uh, could I ask, uh, how, what is the mix? Uh, how I mean the maximum uh, pressure uh, is to oh. uh, by CPT test. Uh, what is... oh, that one, the, all the figures exactly because it is already more than four years. I have done that one. Okay. So, I have not uh, uh, placed here all this uh, data. Sorry, I could not share it. Afterwards, you can share it. Okay. 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 Please share. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sakil, and thank you, Sakawat. I now I move to uh, our our uh, other questions. We have uh, one question from uh, Japan. Um, uh, Angela, yes. Angela Molva is asking you uh, one question regarding to the uh, the finer material and, and something like that. As we saw the finer material layers in higher depth, how was the yes. compressibility condition of those? What kind of OCR value we obtained, and was there any chance of subsidence? If yes, then what steps you took? She asks uh, the the thing about the uh, like uh, the compressibility and OCR value that you obtained from the various layer. Uh, Did you perform those those kind of analysis over there, like uh, compressibility analysis of the layer? Yes, yes, we have right. performed all this one, and then uh, mm, say subsidence means um, below. Like after uh, due to due to due to compressibility, I think she was asking yeah. for the depending upon the OCR value, how you decided mm. the uh, subsidence rate of subsidence, and maybe uh, this is the particular thing that we have to decide for the file design also. Yeah, uh, one thing yeah, is settle, uh, settlement. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sakil is telling us the, about the settlement. About, about, about the settlement. Okay. Yes. So yes. this one uh, at the working site mainly the material is uh, coarse sand, some mm -hmm. gravel below seventy meter depth, and then fine sand. Mm -hmm. Clay was found below hundred and twenty meters only. Okay. So mostly above one twenty meter, it is sand. Hand sand, medium sand, and poor sand. So okay. for that one, because the sand is at that depth, it is already highly compacted, right? So uh, I have not gone into detail of the design phase and then detail of the design aspect because I was over occupied with the construction supervision and then uh, drilling super drilling plus uh, say geotechnical drilling plus uh, our uh, lab test. In this testing side was only. So all these design aspects and other calculation details, I was not involved to tell you frankly. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. So no I, I do not, we do all the tests and give this data to the, our design team or the team which is uh, 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 say checking the detailed design and then pile configuration, everything. So it was not, okay. uh, time was not enough or say I, I was mostly over occupied with my side work only. So, you, uh, so I'm sorry that I could not give you the detailed detail, but subsidence should not be a problem with sand. What I okay. feel. So you you mean to say that like you have a pile that uh, Sakil is asking about the the pile uh, in bearing pile or friction pile? Of course, it is a friction pile. This is uh, in bearing. There is a say, okay. um, uh, friction uh, skin friction also uh, counted, but the maximum scouring depth of the river is minus sixty two meter. Okay. Means below the ground level. So okay. up to uh, 62 meter below the ground level, we cannot calculate the skin friction, right? Skin friction was counted below that depth only. That's why the pile depth is very high. And then N friction, N bearing is there. That's why to increase the, enhance the N bearing, we have to do the uh, base grouting. Okay. Base grouting for each so, and every pile. Base grouting okay. was done. So th th there is another question from Sanjeev. Like he was asking about the floating platform. That uh, maybe yes. it looks like he was interested to know about the drilling procedure in the fast flowing river and the floating platform. Could you yes. please give it's, some idea yeah, yeah. on? Yeah, yeah, floating platform is we use a very large type of floating bars. These barges are a special type of barges. Floating barges, they have special uh, connections so that when the river level is up and down, they can adjust it mm. without hampering our drilling equipment and then all the drill lots, anything. 
they can adjust the uh, say um, height what do I, we can see the elevation of the uh, bars as per the river flow and okay. then especially in uh, say uh, deep river channel we avoid the monsoon high flow time we did the drilling over there in dry season okay otherwise in okay. high flow time it was very very difficult uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you. once in our it was in pier number 3 we did uh, with uh, it was not so deep but we did it with uh, say our uh, platform but what happened is immediately when we progress around 2 days we need around 7 days to complete one borehole but after 3 days there was big fraud and that platform was swept away with some of the equipment so that time type of risk also we had faced yes. luckily no um, people engaged only some equipment was lost and then we had to do the drilling again in dry season so that kind of uh, say what to say some difficulties we felt but mostly we carried out the uh, geotechnical investigation geotechnical investigation in dry season to avoid all these things okay uh, now i have only uh, one question uh, i think there is no question from the, our our listeners now i have one question sir uh, so like uh, did you face the problem of this uh, sign boiling in the uh, exploratory uh, borehole during uh, geotechnical investigation? Oh, in uh, GI investigation uh, void, uh, luckily we didn't encounter any void. There was collapse of the borehole, obviously at some places. We have to uh, say mitigate the collapse with uh, using uh, some thicker bentonite or sometimes we have to avoid that borehole and do the boring nearby five or seven meters. Okay. There is no so, uh, sign. Yeah, and there is no sign boiling problem. Sign boiling No, problem. yeah, void. Void was not encountered. No, no, I'm talking about the sign boil. Inside oh, the sand boil, sand boil, no. Sand, sand boiling, we, can, we didn't encounter luckily. Sign boiling okay. was not there. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was not I there. Think yeah, thank you very much, sir. I think uh, we have a good discussion already now. Uh, now, uh, I would like to thank you, our our uh, speaker, uh, uh, Dr. Hemnath Gimire, for this excellent presentation and the discussion that we had to, uh, today. Uh, now, we are now in of the uh, program, near to end of the program. Before the evening, uh, we have a two uh, uh, small uh, announcement, and of course, the word of thanks is there. Uh, I would like to request our uh, professor uh, Sakhawat Hussain to give something, uh, some information about the that what we are planning for ARC in 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 uh, Dhaka. Uh, Sakhawat, we are planning, we are ready to give some some speech here. Yeah, not speech, just like it is an opportunity for me. Uh, thank you very much for giving the opportunity, as because uh, Dr. Hamna, uh, uh, after enjoying this uh, nice presentation, nobody is interested to listen to me. Anyhow, as because this is a good, uh, wonderful opportunity for me to uh, to see at least online all of the members of the Nepal Geological uh, Engineering Geological Society. And so uh, this uh, forum is as because uh, as a co-organizer, they are also joining with us in 2025 in Bangladesh. And that's why officially in favor of uh, IAG Bangladesh National Group and Jahanginagar University Bangladesh, I'd like to invite, as because it's my pleasure to invite all of you to join with us in ARC 2025 in Dhaka, Bangladesh. And Professor Dahan, uh, he, he is the Vice President of Asia, and, and he also uh, pushed us just uh, to uh, to start our work and we are thinking to uh, develop a website to start our station and fix up all the sessions in discussing with our co-organizers and other members so i hope that in the next few months we'll be able if we'll be able to finish i'll send it to the nepal society of engineering geology through uh professor Dahal. and again once again i would like to invite all of you to join with us i hope you will be in bangladesh in 2025. Thank you very much for giving the opportunity. Professor Dahl. Thank, thank you. Very thank, much. thank you very much. That's a very excellent uh, the, the request from your side for our, all, all the members of the Society of Engineering Geology to join our program. And we do have our our uh, participants from uh, from our Indian uh, Society of Engineering Geology, Niharich here, and he's giving us the 
congratulatory uh, messages in our chat box. Thank you, Nihar. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, with this, uh, I would like to request our uh, Vice President, uh, uh, Dr. Kumur Raj Kafli, to give some uh, to give a speech on the uh, program overall, and as well as the word of thanks and, and conclude the uh, this uh, today's uh, program. Kumut. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ranul. Uh, it is very much interactive and um, I, I very much interactive and learnable, actually. It is the, the big structure, it is six kilometers, more than six kilometer structure bridge. And it is obviously, it is very much uh, big structure for Nepalese context. We don't have so much the such type of structure. For this, the foundation problem, the foundation uh, structures, and uh, geological problem in encountering this all are the more knowledgeable so especially uh, we are most thankful from our uh, guest um, uh, dr hemna gimire gimire sir uh, obviously and other participants uh, who inter in, uh, who had good interaction between uh, hemna sir and the participants it was good questions there are so many good questions and Overall coordination, first of all, overall coordination uh, of this uh, uh, program for lecture series, not only today, but also the past and coming future, all uh, the continuous effort from Dal, sir, you are most uh, thank you from us. And we, we, we cannot avoid you. <laughs> you are the most, uh, the very much laborious person. And then after all participate, not only in Nepal, but also from Bangladesh, Professor Bangla Hussain, and then after other Bangladesh uh, participants, even India, even abroad from China, uh, abroad from Japan. Uh, so I have seen so many participants and our uh, national participants also, it has quite good uh, participation. It is around 50 uh, participants. Uh, so it was good and knowledgeable of the most of it, not only for uh, the young uh, scientists, young geoscientists, but also for us also, it is very learnable. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this time, the preciousness. Thank you very much, Nandan sir. And obviously, last not least, the actually our NSEG total organizing committee. We are thankful from this all members. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So with this, I'd like to uh, in the in the our our in our program. Uh, Nandan ji, may I speak few words? Yeah, please, sir. Please, why not, sir? Please, please. So please. first of all. Uh, I like to thank you yourself because you are the one to coordinate all these things. And thanks for uh, NSEG. Thank you, Professor Sakawat and all other friends who are here. So what I uh, just would like to inform and share is that if any of us are very interested to go into detail about this project, because really it is iconic project. And then I had the opportunity to work here. And then I'll thank Bangladesh, Padma Bridge, Always, I'm thankful to Bangladesh because I've been working there more than 11 years. I feel like I'm Bangladesh is my second home. Okay. And then I thank Padma because it has given me one uh, identity in Nepal also. So if any of us has, uh, are interested to uh, discuss in detail and then say share our ideas, I'm always yeah. ready. Please inform you. me, our young yeah. engineers, young geologists who are uh, say, just into the construction uh, field, uh, we have uh, at least some more things to share with you so that it will make you easy for the practical things which you have to uh, say work at the site. So I'm always ready. Please don't hesitate. I'm always ready to share my experience with you all. Please contact me if anything. Thank you so much. Currently, I'm in Nepal, so I'll be here around another three, four months. Uh, Professor Sakawat, uh, I am engaged in uh, Matarbari Deep Seaport, the connection road. Once the okay. construction starts, I'll be there in mid of 2023. And okay. uh, up to 2025, I'll be there. Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome, sir. Time. I am already. Hello. Uh, welcome, sir. I am already in Matarbari. Actually, I am working okay. as a geotechnical engineer in Matarbari power plant oh. and port work. So, okay, sir. Last good, good, five good. years, I am yes. working okay. here. So Once of course yeah. I the connection road starts, I'll be there in the site. Yeah, it will be so, nice to meet you. And, yeah, and, okay, also, and also it 
possible we are inviting you to uh, Jahangirnagar University as Shakil is from Jahangirnagar University also. Okay. So, and uh, if it is possible, I can get your email and others for easy contact sometimes. Yeah. Okay, sure, sir. Sure. Please uh, keep in touch. Once okay. I'm in oh, I'm from, yeah, Professor Dahal, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll, I'll share you the email address. Thank you, okay, yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, Sakil. Thank you very much. That's thank excellent. You. Your participants and your, your very live discussion. Thank you very much. So with this, I think we have to close here. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank uh, our uh, host, NREN, for the excellent arrangement of this Zoom platform. And they are supporting us continuously for our uh, this uh, lecture series. Uh, so thank you, uh, Dirajanji, from the NREN uh, for, for this today, uh, like excellent uh, organizing the, the, all the Zoom platform. Thank you very much for, from our side. So with this, I, I would like to close the session. Uh, thank you all our participants around the globe, better to say. Uh, there, there's a good participation from the South Asia and of course from Southeast Asia, from Thailand. I, I noticed many people from Thailand also and from Japan and from um, and, uh, Taiwan. I think everywhere, better to say. So there are good good participation and we are, we, we are live in Facebook also. So that is also in the recorded form. So anytime we can see and check the lectures from our uh, respected uh, Hemnath Thank you very much and bye-bye to all. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Oh,